next on your only local news at 5.30, President Trump approved a major disaster declaration for Oregon. How this will help the state's wildfire recovery efforts. As, di as districts delay the start of the school year, when remote learning is set to start. Coming up, hazardous air quality is the latest in a string of economic disasters. Hoping, hoping. And you live in Western Oregon. This is NBC 16 News at 5:30. President Trump approved a major disaster declaration for Oregon, giving the state more resources for recovery. So far, more than 838,000 acres burned across Oregon, according to the Office of Emergency Management. This as 37 fires continue to burn across the state. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Jacqueline Mazur. New information on the magnitude of the destruction of the Holiday Farm Fire and those impacted by it. At least 315 structures were destroyed by the fire or are no longer usable. 14 buildings have taken some damage and 102 were located with no damage reported. The fire is still 166,000 acres with about 6% containment on the 200 mile perimeter. One of our photographers is currently with fire crews and will bring back new video of an incident side look at the holiday farm fire. You can see that video right here on NBC 16 News at 11. Initial structural damage assessment information for the Holiday Farm Fire is available to residents whose homes were within the fire area. Homeowners can now call the number on your screen 541-682-3977 between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. to receive their assessment information. <laughs> Now to live team coverage, NBC 16 is on your side, focusing on the impacts of the Holiday Farm and Archie Creek fires. Chief Meteorologist Josh Cozart is standing by in the Weather Center with more on the possibility of rain. Our David Ochoa is live in Winston, where the Wildfire Safari is offering to shelter big cats. NBC 16's Olivia Young is live in downtown Eugene, looking at the economic impact businesses are faking. And we start tonight with our Keely McCormick, who is live at the 4J School District building with more on why the start date for students is being pushed back. Keely. Yeah, the students in Springfield and Eugene expected to start classes this week, but the wildfires created some obvious roadblocks. The wildfires and smoke are pushing back the first day of school. The Springfield and Eugene school districts will start one week later on September 21st, but Lane Tompkins, the McKenzie School District superintendent, says they hope to start September 28th. But after all this tragedy, he says the start of the school year won't only be about homework. Imagine the, the early weeks will be a lot of listening and, and talking and, and, and mourning and um, sharing stories. And that's that's healthy. That's how people um, process and get through. He says right now his staff is focusing on reconnecting with students and seeing what they need. Jenna McCauley with the Springfield District says it wasn't just the smoke that pushed them to delay the start date. We have a, a large swath of our community that is directly impacted by these uh, fires. Both districts say they have staff and students inside evacuation zones. The Eugene District Chief of Staff says this will be a difficult time for students in all districts. This is a really challenging time on top of the coronavirus impacts, we're now seeing wildfire impacts. While the wildfires themselves are not in the Eugene School District for the most part, we are seeing some students and some of our staff who live in the areas that are directly impacted. Tompkins says his district is preparing to support the students and help them through these trying times. The Eugene and Springfield districts will continue with technology distribution this week as long as the air quality allows them to be outside to do so. Right now, the delay in start will not change break times and the last day of school will still be on June 17th. All three of the districts said they're eager to reunite with students and get through these trying times together. Right now, teachers will use this extra time to continue to prepare for the school year. Live in Eugene, I'm Keely McCormick. Back to you. All right, Keely, thanks for that update tonight. The National Guard met with fire officials working to contain the Archie Creek fire in Glide this morning. Fire crews worked to construct direct and indirect lines and mop ups. The fire is standing at 121 acres and now 15% contained. Highway 138 East remains closed as ODOT and Public Power work to clean up the road.
The Beachy Creek fire in the Santiam Canyon is still growing. Fire officials say it's now up to 190,000 acres burned with 15% containment. The growth was reported after an aerial assessment was completed, allowing for a more accurate measure and improved mapping. More than 16,000 structures are within level three evacuation zones and another 18,000 plus are in level two evacuations. We're checking in now with our chief meteorologist, Josh Cozart, who joins us live in the Weather Center. Josh, still hazardous air quality. Any signs of the skies clearing up? Well, the good news is, is the skies have already started to clear, at least along the coast. And we can see that with our air quality monitor at good standing in the North Bend Coos Bay area. Not so much to say the same up and down the I-5 corridors. We sit anywhere from unhealthy in the red to these maroon to purple colors, very unhealthy and hazardous conditions. So still, we need to be limiting our time spent outside and keep all those windows and doors closed as air quality warnings still remain through much of Western Oregon through Thursday afternoon. And a closer look at the Willamette Valley dense smoke advisories and dense fog advisories in effect through tomorrow afternoon. It really kind of connects itself together and drops the visibilities extremely low for our morning commutes and speaking of visibility is already down to a half mile in the Eugene Springfield area down towards the Umpqua Valley, but clearing skies found out and along the coast. Now the reason for the smoke still staying over Western Oregon is due to a south to north flow. So the smoke all the way down from the California wildfires still funneling its way up and through the I-5 corridor, something we'll have to contend with for the next several days. But I am tracking the chance for some rain showers that should hopefully put an end to all of the smoke and haze. I'll discuss that timeline coming up in my full forecast. It, this really is an unprecedented uh, confluence of of emergencies and crises that are all sort of conflicting with each other and creating uh, challenges that we just have never dealt with before. Devastating fires and hazardous air quality combined with coronavirus are creating a perfect storm for Lane County. While officials work to mitigate the impact of these crises, they're also looking towards the rebuilding process. NBC 16's Olivia Young is live at the Fifth Street Market with more on the economic recovery effort. Olivia, how are local businesses managing with all the smoke? Jacqueline, many businesses have already been struggling during the pandemic. That's why solutions like Eugene's Streetery program have been key to keeping those businesses afloat. But smoke from all these fires shut down the Streetery this past weekend and has dealt another sharp blow to the local economy. Hazardous air quality is just the latest crisis in a difficult year for Eugene's business owners. COVID has obviously impacted our business and we were finally feeling a little bit of a relief from that. We were finally getting more business in and then immediately the yeah, the smoke came in and Kirsch says she's seen a sharp drop in customers since the smoke came. Her business had to close early several days last week. Other businesses have closed entirely. Eugene's Chamber of Commerce president says both the pandemic and hazardous air quality are hitting the retail and hospitality industries hard. While those industries have a difficult road ahead, she's optimistic about long-term recovery. We really need to put our put our heads together and figure out a way to support our retail and our hospitality industries until things can get back to some sort of normal. Um, in which case I know that we will pick up the business in those areas because we have a beautiful community. We have a place that people want to be. While businesses cope with the smoke, the Holiday Farm Fire presents a more difficult challenge. County officials saying today it could take years to rebuild structures and homes that have been destroyed by a fire that's still burning. It's just extremely hazardous and uh, to have any expectation that we'll be able to build immediately is um, just not reality. I just want to make sure that the community knows we are in this for the long haul and that long haul means several years. As Lane County looks toward a long recovery, locals like Kirsch still have a lot to be thankful for. It's hard, but it's we haven't lost anything besides the business, you know, so it's we, we definitely have that perspective. At the 5th Street Public Market, it's still quiet today. Streetery organizers will decide tomorrow if air quality will make it unhealthy to open back up this weekend. Once the smoke finally clears, businesses should get some relief. But as the weather gets colder, they may again have trouble providing that outdoor seating. Live in downtown Eugene, I'm Olivia Young. That is very important to us. We want every eligible registered voter to receive a ballot. 
Wildfires forced many families out of their home and now new concerns with voting in the November election that is now less than 50 days away. Election officials want those families to know there are still ways to get your ballots. NBC 16's Amanda Slee explains what you need to do. Lane and Douglas County residents are dealing with devastating fires, but they shouldn't be worried about voting in the upcoming election. We want to assure voters that we are here to help them. We're here to um, determine and lo find options that are allowed within the law requirements. And we just want to let them know that we're here and available to answer questions. To ensure you get your ballot, you need to update your mailing address on your current registration. You can do that at OregonVotes.gov or with a voter registration card by October 13th. If they need to make an update to where they live after the October 13th deadline, then um, in that case, they need to come to our office to be issued a ballot. Even if you're temporarily living outside your residential area. Their current registration at their address that, they're, that they were residing is still a valid address for voting purposes. So that's no problem. They'll still be voting on the items that what they were eligible to vote at the time of that address. Because of the current situation, Douglas County officials expect a low turnout as families that are affected may have higher priorities. Similar to to the May primaries, we did have lower turnout due to likely coronavirus uh, concerns, and I assume this will be uh, similar. Again, there's no need to worry because no matter where you're taking refuge, election officials will make sure you get your ballot as long as you update your mailing address. I'm Amanda Slee reporting. All right, thanks, Amanda. Ballots will be mailed starting October 14th. The recommendation is to mail in your ballot at least seven days before Election Day or drop off your ballot at a designated drop site. President Trump and Joe Biden will go head-to-head -head in three debates. The first is coming up in two weeks on September 29th in Cleveland. The second will be a town hall meeting on October 15th in Miami. And the third and final debate will take place in Nashville on October 22nd. The vice presidential debate between Mike Pence and Kamala Harris is scheduled for October 7th in Salt Lake City. We will broadcast all the debates right here on NBC 16 News. Coming up on your only local news at 530, the wildlife safari is taking in animals that need shelter during the wildfires. How many big cats volunteers helped evacuate?